Hello, uh, welcome to the next video where we are going to implement the large size FFT on the uh, ARM processor of the Zinc SOC. So uh, now let's focus on the uh, code which I have already written. So this is my main function, okay? In the main function, uh, I'll first uh, uh, prepare my input. So you can see that this here I'm preparing the input. Compared to the previous code, here I am uh, generating the inputs using some deterministic function, but you can do it in some other way as well. And the corresponding real and the imaginary parts are stored in the input. Then uh, I'm using the timer to find out the corresponding uh, execution time, and then I'm calling the software function. And the rest of the code is same as the previous code where I'm uh, printing the output data on the UART screen, and then I'm showing the execution time. So this is same as the one. So only new thing is the FFT software. So this is the how we are going to implement the FFT on the processor. And the input is your, uh, your data which you have prepared and the FFT output is again, uh, these are the FFT output of the array. Now, this is my FFT software function. In the FFT software function, I need to do the two tasks. The first task I need to do is that bit reverse operation. And the second task I need to do is the, uh, the, the, the FFT operation. Now bit reverse operation, as I told you, it's very simple. You need to reverse the bit. So for that, what we have done, we have written a very simple uh, logic. So here you can see that this number is being passed to this logic. And what we do, we take one bit at a time. So you can see that this number is and with a zero uh, hex one, that is the LSB bit is taken and it is shifted by the nine bit. So that becomes my MSB bit, assuming that N is the 10 bit number. Then the next uh, uh, bit, the bit at the first location from the LSB side is taken. You can see I have multiplied and it with the two, two corresponds to one zero. So that means I'm taking the second LSB of my number N and I'm shifting it by seven so that it becomes the second most MSP. Then I'm taking the next one. You can see four, uh, I'm taking that is the one zero zero. So I'm taking the third LSB of the nth bit. Then I'm shifting it to the uh, by five. And then this is how I get the corresponding operation. After this shift, I need to do this left shift for the uh, rest of the unit so that they becomes the LSB. So let's do this with the some, uh, some uh, basic uh, example. So here I'll just uh, switch to the whiteboard and then let's discuss one example. So here, uh, let's take the number, which is the 10 bit number. So let's take the number, uh, uh, we'll take it a very simple number. Uh, Yeah, let's take any number, I think, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 3, 4, 4, 8, 4, 4, 8, and 10. Okay, that is fine. Okay, so we have taken this number. Now, uh, I'll just write out the corresponding uh, position, so this is the zeroth position, first, second, third, fourth, mm -hmm. fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and the ninth position. So this is my n, which is the 10 bit number. So what I'm going to do, okay, so I'm going to take the n, and I'm going to do the hand operation with uh, not zero, I'm going to do the AND operation with one, okay? AND operation with one. So that means what I'm going to get is the, I'm going to get is the zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So basically I'm going to extract this zero and I'm going to shift it by the nine bit. So this zero uh, will be shifted at this position. So I'll get, zero, the updated value of the n will be zero, uh, zero. So I'll just go and show you in the code. So I'll extract that one and I've shifted it to the nine, okay? So if we go to the whiteboard, yeah. So now you can see that for my output, 
So I'll just uh, write uh, the output here. So this is my output and this output has the nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So I'll got the zero bit here. Now I'll do the N and with two. So with two, what I'll get is the zero, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. I got one because I'm doing the and with two. So I got this one here. And then now I'm going to shift that by, you can see seven, seven bits. So I'm going to shift this by seven bits. So you can see that the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now this will be here at this position one because I'm going to do the OR operation of those shift. So you can see I'm going to do the OR operation of those shift. Okay, so yeah. So then I'm going to do the AND operation with four. So once I do it four, I'm, I'm going to get this bit one. So I'll get zero, 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 uh, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. So I got this one here. Now I'm going to shift it by one, two, three, four, five position here. Okay, so I got this one here. Okay, then I, I'll have this zero, this will go here. Okay, I'll keep on doing the shift towards the MSB that is there. Then one also, I'll, I'll get it here. Now, after I got it uh, here, you can see that this one, I, I'll start shifting towards the uh, LSB side. So you can see that after I do the 5, 3, then I'll start shifting 1, then I'll start shifting it to the 1, uh, one 3, 5, 7, so that at the end, so that at the end, I get the reverse number uh, in the output. Okay, so this is what the logic is used for the reverse operation. You can come up with your own log logic as well. So this is what the logic is there. And what we do, we do in this one, we do the reverse operation for the real part of the signal as well as the imaginary part of the signal. Okay, so you find out the index for the index i, you find out what is the corresponding index. Like for index zero, it will be zero. For index one, it will be uh, four and so on in case of the 8.50, but you can do it the same thing for the others uh, also, okay? So this is uh, for the, uh, assuming that N is the 10 bit number, but you need to, for other size, you need to take care that you do the reverse operation appropriately. So once this uh, reverse operation is done, okay, then you do the, FFT operation. Now the FFT operation, as we discussed in the uh, corresponding uh, slide, you have the three for loop. The first for loop is for the uh, number of stages. Second for loop is for the, uh, you, you have the second for loop for the each weight, how many times the corresponding uh, weight is being used, right? So if you go to the second for uh, loop, your middle for loop is the number of weights in a stage, okay? That is what your second for loop. So you can see that uh, number of weights. So if you see the stage one, this FFT size will be the uh, stage uh, uh, two to the power stage. That means for first stage, it will be the two, for second stage, it will be uh, four and so on. And this shifted to the right, right? So for the, uh, uh, for the uh, so the for in case of the uh, first stage you will have the uh, eight uh, one so you will have the four weights in case of the uh, second stage you will have the two weights so that's why this is how it is calculated okay so you can do this calculation on your own so here you can see that I got the uh, I I'll run this one for the uh, each weight. So you can see that I'm, I'll be calculating my weights. So I have uh, used the dot h file to store the weights. I'll show you uh, show you later. So this is my weight calculations. 
Okay, I'll take the appropriate weights from the, my uh, matrix, my weight vector. And then the third one, okay, the third loop will be for the uh, calculation of your output. Okay, so you can see that here in the third loop, uh, it depends upon which stage you are in. And uh, based upon that, you need to calculate. For example, if you go back to the slide, in case of the uh, last stage, which is the third stage, your middle loop in the last stage three, okay, your middle loop will be uh, executed for four times. And then your last loop will be executed for the, uh, yeah, for you, you will execute it for only one time. And for each case, you will get two output. And this is how you will get the eight output. So in this case, if you go to the C code, if you see that the uh, when you are in the last stage, okay, uh, that is the uh, stage three, okay, your J can be four weights. So J can be zero, one, two, three. And then for that weight, okay, you, you will be executing uh, for every weight, you will be getting two outputs. Okay, for every weights, you will be getting the uh, two outputs and your FFT size in the last case will be the your uh, four. So you, 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 you don't need to, this loop will be executed only once for the last stage because you will reach the, uh, this it, number of iteration for this will be only, uh, will be only one. So for every weight, you will get two outputs. This loop will be executed four times and you will get the two outputs, you will get the eight, okay? So this is how it is calculated. Uh, now we'll uh, do uh, one more uh, 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 case for, well, we'll look at the second stage. So you can see the second stage, you, you will go to the second stage. You can say that the, when the stage is equal to two, my, SF uh, sub FFT size will be the four, okay? That is what uh, my FFT size. So if you go to the one, my, in the second stage, my FFT size is four, okay? That I have the four point FFT. Now, the number of butterfly will be, is equal to four shifted to one, so two, okay? So number of butterfly will be two. So you can see that I'll have two bits. So if you go to the, MATLAB, the figure here, you can see that I have the two weights. So I'll take the each weight, okay? And then for every weight, how many times I need to use it? So you can see that I'm going to use this each weight two times to calculate these two outputs here. So I'll use it first time to calculate this output and this output, and then another time to calculate this output and this time. So you can see that this code for every weight, this will be this loop will be uh, running for the two times. The first time is for the upper one, second and second time is for the lower one. And for every case, you will get two outputs. So you can see that there are two outputs. One is I lower and I index. So I lower is equal to I plus butterfly uh, width. Okay, that, uh, that is the number of butterfly number, uh, that is number of weights. So you can see that in case of the, when I is equal to zero and it will be number of butterfly weights is two, so you will get a two. Then uh, you will, you will uh, run this example uh, again. So you will get I is equal to four and then you will calculate six. Okay, then you will calculate one, three and five and seven. So this is how you calculate for every uh, iteration, you calculate two, in di uh, two outputs. One is for lower and one is I lower, which is I plus butterfly width and this one. Okay, now uh, let's look at the stage one. So in the stage one, So in the stage one, okay, this is my stage one. So you can see that I have only one weight. Okay, I have the only one weight. So you can see the code here in the stage one, uh, number of uh, stage one. So you can see the butterfly size is two. 
and uh, two shifted to uh, right to uh, by one bit so you get the only one butterfly bit so that means this code will this iteration for loop iteration will be only one uh, will, will be uh, only one iterations because you are using the going to use the same bit so this will be only one iteration of this one and then you will uh, take that weight you will store it in the your internal vector and then for every weight this loop will be executed okay for uh, one weight this will be executed for four times okay you can see that this will be executed four times one two three and four so this is how it is executed four times and in every time you are going in every case you are going to calculate the output so for example for the first case you will calculate this one then this one then this one and this one this is how you are going to calculate so you can see that in the first case so this will be j will be always be zero here uh, because it's only one weight so for i is equal to zero okay so i will be zero here first and the bf width is equal to one okay so that means i lower is equal to one so for the first case we will calculate the index zero and one then uh, what will happen your for loop i will be incremented by the ff sub fft size this is uh, uh, that is uh, you will have the two okay because f50 size divided by sub f50 size you will increment by 2 then you will calculate it for the 2 and 3 then you will calculate for 3 and 4 and then 4 and 5 and this is how you will calculate the corresponding output okay so you can see that the for the first stage uh, this uh, uh, so we can write it down here so let's see So let's see stage one. So this is stage and the uh, loop one, then the loop two, and then the loop three. So in the stage one, okay, the first loop is again, every time it is one, okay, for the stage one, stage two, and the stage three, it's a, each iteration will be loop one. Then for the stage one, the loop two will be executed only one time and the loop three will be executed four times. And in each case, you get the two output. So total you total outputs, you got the four, eight. Then in the stage two, you loop two will be executed two times because you have two weights. But uh, here in, in this case, your second, third loop will be executed again two times and every time you get the two outputs, so you got the total eight outputs. Okay, because you have the two bits here. Then in the loop uh, stage three, which is the last stage, you have the four bits, and each weight will be used uh, to calculate two outputs. So it will be executed one uh, time, and you will get two outputs, and you get the eight outputs. So this is how the number of iterations of the loop uh, two increases, and the uh, number of uh, uh, iterations of the loop three decreases as you go to the higher stages okay so this is how the code is uh, implemented so again you can come up with your own way of writing the code so in the next video we will quickly discuss how to run it on the processor